Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, coming to you from the great state of South Carolina. Today, we are headed to the town of Aiken. Days with Jordan the Lion, you all, and the Joster, it begins right now. Saw this cool tobacco factory and just had to stop and take a look. Best for three generations, it says. Standard of the world. All right, let's get back on the road. There's the, uh, the little sidekick slash co-pilot. Look at the cotton fields. So here is South Lawn. There's a famous record holder and wrestler buried out here. I'd like to visit. It's a really nice, peaceful, beautiful cemetery out here. Even though this headstone right here is not the one we're looking for it kind of made me laugh because it says maxwell tucker honeycutt born really alive <laughs> you gotta love somebody with a sense of humor don't you really alive <laughs> so who we're looking for is actually back here in this corner so kind of a sideshow wrestler i guess you would say more of a special attraction. He wasn't someone who you would have seen the greats of the 50s wrestling. This is a man you would have seen wrestling a bear. Yeah, he was known for being one monstrously tough and strong farm boy who got the opportunity to become a wrestler and then would travel around at about 750 pounds. William Joseph Cobb was actually billed as Happy Humphrey. And Happy Humphrey was, he got the name from, it was a cartoon character in the local newspaper comic strips. It was this big fat character with a hat and these kind of balloonish pants. And so he took that style of look and became a professional wrestler in the sideshow type circuit. He was so big that he had to have a custom car. He had a 1951 Pontiac. They had pushed the front seats way up and pushed the back seats as far back as they would go so that he would have a comfortable ride to and from all of his matches. It was also a publicity stunt. In addition, the publicity stunts would continue on when he would get to the matches. They would have him weighed on a meat scale and they would tell what his actual weight was he um you know he's so big that he oftentimes even though he was a really friendly guy and all the kids that would come to these events would love him and he never turned anyone away for an autograph he would also be ridiculed and made fun of pretty much everywhere he went he would he oftentimes got stuck in things he got stuck in a movie theater seat one time and they had to use a welder to cut out the seats around him he got stuck in a telephone booth kind of a sad life for fame yeah long before dr now and the 600 pounders on tlc there was happy humphrey and he generally weighed about 750 pounds but he would get up to 800 at some points and at his max he was 904 pounds which made him the Guinness Book of World Record, world's heaviest man to ever wrestle. And Jim Cornette would say in interviews that he could remember in the 70s buying Guinness and seeing at that time that Happy Humphrey, uh, William Joseph Cobb was actually the heaviest man in the world. He was definitely a well-loved attraction. As you can imagine, someone that would wrestle a bear, he would do handicap matches where he would take on several men at once. He would even wrestle people not quite as big as him because he was pretty big. He would take on people like Haystack Calhoun for exhibition matches. One of the first times I ever really ever heard of him was when I was reading up on Harley Race and Harley Race talked about how he got his start driving Happy Humphrey around to all of his matches. And at the time, Harley was trying to get in the business so this seemed like a good opportunity because he was getting paid so he would get paid not only 25 dollars to wrestle 
Happy Humphrey, but he would get paid $5 to also drive him to and from the matches as a chauffeur. He would get free room and board, but the downside was he had to wrestle Happy Humphrey, who was a pretty big guy, sweat quite a lot, and Harley would say this is where he learned how to take bumps, how he would kind of like break into the business. But part of his job was after the matches, he would have to take Happy Humphrey out back, get the garden hose, get a mop, and he would have to wash him before they would get in the car and take off for the hotel. Now, I guess if you're in it for fame, I guess this would be a lot of fun, but he really did enjoy it. I mean, I don't think he enjoyed being that heavy, but he would say throughout his life, he always enjoyed the wrestling part of it. He loved being around the guys. He loved the attention. He loved the fame. He loved all that stuff. But at some point, he just got too heavy. And so he went to a school in Augusta and participated in their program on weight loss. And he had to agree to move into the facility for, uh, he ended up staying for a full two years. He could not leave the facility. He could not exercise. He had to stay in the facility because it had to be um, air conditioned and regulated because they didn't want him to sweat. But they were putting him, I guess, every 50 or so days on a different type of diet. And throughout that time, he would also gain another world record. He would have the world record for the most weight loss. He would end up losing 520 pounds by the time he had left that facility in a two-year span and he decided to leave and not continue wrestling and just get a regular job as a shoemaker shoe repairman kind of amazing to think of losing that much weight and of course he wouldn't be quite the draw to wrestling anymore without the weight so yeah you can imagine but he sadly missed the wrestling and simultaneously was gaining back the weight over the years so even though he had retired in 1962 from wrestling and lost that weight during that time in the years after he ended up by 1972 back in the ring over 600 pounds wrestling he would even make an appearance in a movie and unfortunately would pass away at the age of 62 from a massive heart attack Happy Humphrey lived quite a life, that's for sure. Sadly, when I told you he had to retire, it was because he had the heart issue and that's what forced him to lose the weight. But if you think about it, I mean, he had to use two chairs when he would eat in a restaurant. A lot of times the restaurants would refuse to serve him because they just didn't feel like they had enough food to, to feed him. Uh, it was said that he would eat up to 50 chickens for a meal and uh but he also sold out madison square garden was a huge draw and harley race said maybe the nicest guy you ever knew happy humphrey had a real heart of gold rest in peace william joseph cobb happy humphrey now aiken south carolina there's also another famous person that actually lives here still alive um, I've heard throughout the years not in great health, but I haven't heard anything about them recently. So I'm going to try and meet this person today. I'm going to try and meet Refrigerator William Perry if I can. I'm hoping he lives here. This is the last known address for him. It looks like the house is on an assisted living facility grounds. Well, so far I'm not having much luck. The most recent phone number I was able to find is now as someone else's phone number and they said no this is his old number and uh, and then I went to his last address and she said nope they kind of asked him to leave because he was partying too much <laughs> so we're still on the hunt I'm gonna go to the main office and see if maybe they can tell me where he moved to well dang it we tried didn't we Ja? we tried well my friends at least for now I think I've hit a roadblock with finding William the refrigerator Perry Speaking of Perry, I guess I should have brought Stone Fury Perry Caravello to help me find uh, the fridge, but unfortunately, they couldn't give me any answers at the front desk. They, they couldn't really remember where he moved to. Guy said he thought Columbia, South Carolina, but online I was finding a number for Augusta, Georgia. I called it and they said this is his old number. So, yep, I ran out of places to call, so. Fridge, if you're watching this, I'd love to meet you. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.
Please,